about the progress of the defense so far? And yeah, we'll find out more tonight, you know, at the scrimmage and you actually get a tackle live and, and those types of things. But I think we're making strides. I thought South Farm was one day we made good strides, you know. Um, the interesting thing is always you're rotating in uh, different groups, right? You've obviously got your ones, twos, and threes, but within that, you're intertwining guys, seeing if they're kind of a, a two that's making a stride towards a one or, or a three that's moving up into the two. So it's kind of a, it's a give and take on that, but I definitely think we're making progress. Coach Arnett had some praise for Jacoby and Marcus, what they were doing at you know, that safety spot. Who's kind of someone you're looking at that could maybe come in and take that you know, third spot here and impress tonight? Right. Well, I mean, Sean Preston, you, you expect him to be a consistent guy just because of the reps that he's got. Uh, right behind him is Isaac Smith, you know, who physically has the ability to do it. He's just learning all the different things that go into being a college football player at this level, mentally and physically. Uh, so he's competing for it. Jordan Moran's been competing for it. So I know I'm giving you a long list on a simple question, but there's a lot of them right now. And I think hopefully things start to separate over the next week to, to two weeks. I mean, they're going to have to, right? So somebody needs to step up and take that. Coach Arnett said recently that uh, you know, he was given a ton of autonomy by Coach Leach, and he's going to do the same thing for his coordinators. And at the same time, he says you and he kind of see defense the same way. So, mm -hmm. what are some of the ways maybe you put your own fingerprints on this on this scheme? I think that'll be yet to be determined, but I, I think it's a, it's always going to be a collaborative effort. You know, it kind of has been to a degree, other than just the calling of it, but. Uh, I think it's an interesting mix, you know, and, and you try to – you just naturally evolve a defense anyways from year to year. So whether I was calling it or he's calling it this season, things are naturally going to evolve because your personnel changes, how people have been attacking you, right? You get to go back and review those things. So I think that's just a natural evolution process that, uh, that occurs every year. You guys know? like Crumity and Pickering, they're known factors. What do you think about guys like Dinkins and others that are developing mm -hmm. that next rotation of defensive linemen? I thought Dinkins had a great summer, and, and I think he's having a solid camp. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how he plays tonight. Um, uh, and then, of course, Travion Williams, mm -hmm. you know, coming along as well. And then Eric Taylor, you know, he's shown up and he's done some good things. But I'll tell you, the guy that has impressed me as much or more than any of them is Deontay Anderson. I mean, he's played more physically. He's always been a natural pass rusher. But in the run game, he's starting to show, uh, you know, the violence at contact and things like that that we want to see at that, at that level of the defense, you know. We saw Talk flashes about. from JP uh, last year during, during the season. Have you continued to see his progression, I guess, so far over the or early course of camp? I have. I mean, JP's a smart guy. He's developing into that position, you know. He's uh, he added weight. Obviously, he's getting used to that weight as far as how you're supposed to play with the fanatical effort we want, carrying that weight. You know, so he's having to push that wall back. But yeah, absolutely, there's been progress. There needs to be more progress, but there has been progress. You talked about defenses evolving year to year. So from last year to this year, what's the biggest difference in your defense? I'm gonna wait till that comes on game day. We <laughs> talked about that too much. No, but I just think I just think in general, you've got to try to make sure you're putting your guys in the best position. So whether that be uh, coverage. You know, adjustment here or there, whether it be a front adjustment here or there. Uh, those are just things that we're still, honestly, we're still working out, right? Because you get, you have ideas as coaches, you work through them, and then you put them on the field and you decide, well, is it a good idea or is it not? You know, that's the, that's the living proof out there and, and in the film room. So those are still things that we're working through, just to be totally honest with you. I had a couple of guys mention Zakari Tillman as a young guy that's kind of stood out. What have you seen from him so far? Oh, athletically, he can do it, no doubt about it. You know, he's a quick twitch guy. He's pretty physical. He's learning how to play the game with his hands at the line of scrimmage. You know, when people get up to him, uh, he sees it pretty well naturally for a guy that hasn't played as a second level defender uh, much throughout his career as a high school player. Uh, but, uh, you know, he, his biggest thing for him, and he knows this is every day, he's got to learn how to approach. Uh, the process of, of learning in the film room, correcting mistakes, and going out there and, and fixing them. But definitely been excited what what he's shown to this point. Every defensive guy we talked to has said they appreciate being able to go full time in practice against the types of offenses they're going to be seeing as compared to previous years. Have you seen a difference in the defensive guys and how they practice in that regard? I think for sure in terms of just seeing formations, adjustments, uh, motions, shifts, uh, all those things for sure has made us better. You know, it's it's exposed things schematically that we have to go back and make sure, all right, are we doing the things we need to from our standpoint to give them the best possible chance to be successful? And then the second thing, the physical aspect of it, right? I mean, we're rolling off the ball, running the football, and so that creates a different element too for you, and, and you get to decide who actually wants that, uh, wants that contact when it gets a little noisy in there. And that's what's been fun uh, to see that daily. 
not even just from last year, but it looks like from the spring, De Carlos has kind of made a jump and really competing for that corner spot. Mm -hmm. Where have you seen him kind of develop uh, going into this fall? He seems to be more confident to me. You know, he still has to continue to develop, but uh, you know, he, he's become more physical, a better tackler. He's got long strides to uh, to go still on that. But there's definitely been progress in all those areas with him. What do you want to see in tonight's scrimmage? Oh, I'd like to, I'd like to see a high level of ex execution. Um, you know, we kind of instruct the coaching staff once we get out there, once we start, once we start the scrimmage portion, right? Coaching's done. There's no no yelling from the sideline if a guy's misaligned or you know if you try, hey, watch out for watch out for the screen or something like that. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna be quiet and let players line up and play, and we'll see where we're at. Get a good evaluation of what we need to invest more time working on, what we uh, what we have in, but we're just not very good at, and it's probably not worth the investment to keep working on it. You know, so it gives coaches a kind of a Accountability test, right? How good of a job have we done through the first week and several days? Does that apply to the head coach too, as far as how he handles his assistants oh, out there? Oh, more so than anyone, right? Yeah, more so than anyone. We're not a very good football team. That's uh, that's on me. What about positional battles? I know the position coach has a lot of say in that, but are there any particular battles that you're really watching as you go under the lights tonight? Uh, you know, the one I talked about a few days ago. I, I really do. Um, we got a couple young defensive ends who are making a pretty strong case to me and Coach Brock that we might be better off in a, uh, playing a little bit more four down front and get, getting a linebacker off the field. And then there are times in personnel groupings when the offense gives some heavier sets, there's times where I could see us being a 4-3 and take a safety off the field. And so I kind of had a little meeting on defense that you're not just in position, you're not in competition with the guys in your in your position group, right? You're a lot of times you're in competition with guys in a different position group on what, on what personnel do we actually put out there from play to play. So. It, it's going to be some good good stuff on the uh, defensive side of the ball. Offense, obviously, we're working a lot of different O-line combinations, trying to find the best five, right? Uh, got a lot of tight ends, different roles. Running backs, got a deep, deep stable. You know, who's going to be probably that that number two guy to get the next chunk of carries behind Woody, right? Uh, so, yes, a lot of competition expected to be seen tonight. How much have you seen between your coordinators of, you know, Coach Barbe being able to benefit from going against Coach Brock's defense and then vice versa? Well, anytime you're facing kind of multiple schemes on the other side, right? It gives you a good look of all the things you have to prepare for. You know, if you have a play, if you have a play on offense that, man, if we get this coverage or this, if we get a four down quarters look, we got them right where we want them. But if there's anything else, it's a bad play. It's going to end up in a negative negative yards. That's probably not a very good play, right? Same thing on defense. Oh man, if they give us it, we got this blitz called. If they run this play, we're stoning them. But there's about four other plays they could run. It's going to be an explosive play given up. That's probably not a very good de right? defensive call. So uh, anytime you're multiple and you're facing different variety of plays, defensive blitz packages, alignments, it, uh, it exposes the, the weaknesses or the flaws in your, in your installation of the, those schemes. Every player you sign, you have high expectations for. So it's not a surprise when guys turn out. But is there anybody maybe that looks to be ahead of schedule for, among the younger guys? Mm, you want that specifically to freshmen, like true freshmen? Any of your or? newcomers, any of your newcomers. Newcomers, okay. Uh, Zakari telling me right now is playing, looking to me like he's going he gonna to play a lot of football for us this year or have a chance to. Uh, you know, a couple young DBs, Bryce Pollock's obviously going to get thrown in the mix. Obviously, I'm starting defense first. I tend to work on that side a little bit more. Uh, Isaac Smith, obviously, too. Okay. Uh, several others in special teams roles. You know, we'll get we'll get some good special teams one on one competition work tonight too to kind of match those guys up and see who might be physically ready for what they're getting there getting into this fall on the opposite side of the ball. Uh, off the top of my head, you know, newcomers obviously Pittman's done a really nice job. He's a little bit older, right? He's a JUCO guy. Um, so yeah, I'll have to think about that one a little more. Probably a little bit unfair to the old lineman. Some of those young guys, you know, with, with all the blitz variety they're getting thrown at them right now mm -hmm. and everything, to expect an offensive lineman to be up to speed right away is is difficult. Belazar's done a nice job, another JC newcomer who can he can take the top off and roll, right? So that's been good. You mentioned Justin. Antonio Harmon, another you know, the young one, right? Kind of playing a dual tight end, big receiver role for us that can create some some good advantages us advantages for us, hopefully. You know, get him matched up on a linebacker, you get a little athleticism advantage. 
big enough to block DBs and support in the run game. So he's done a nice job too. You mentioned Justin Robinson, I think, last week. Uh, things you were liking to see him. It was just a, like a springboard off the bowl game, or, or he come into camp with that same kind of mentality. I, I, I could rip off, you know, several names here that I think are showing up every day with the right mentality of work. But he'd be right at the top of that list. Yeah, I think he, I think he knows if he has a good year, right? There'll be a lot of people talking about him, and he'll have decisions to make at the end of the year. And that's you want guys with that kind of ambition and mindset. So I, I can't think of a day where he hadn't showed up. Yeah, and worked like a number one, so that's that's been uh, I've been appreciative of that. You've talked about not being ready, not being ready you know, so early in camp. Usually, how long does it take for you to look at your team and go, "Okay, well, we're ready"? I don't know if a coach ever truly feel, <laughs> feels that, but uh, you know, we'll get to we'll show scrimmage tonight. Right, we'll give us a really good evaluation. We'll have another week of practice, kind of true, kind of camp style. Have another scrimmage. And then you kind of get more into, you know, we call it mock week, but essentially you mirror what the first first game week is going to look like, right? So you get, you get into the routine of it, you start facing scout teams as opposed to going against each other. And at some point, it's kind of nice, whether you're ready or not, September 2nd ain't moving. So you just, you play the game, you want to play the game. Kind of building off that, uh, not that you're ever satisfied, but what things, I guess, nine days into camp have you looked at and you're really just pleased at where you're at right now? Not. I mean, I'm not, I mean <laughs> well, you know, I mean, if you execute, if you, if the offense throws the ball over the, over the top for a touchdown, hey, that's great. Well, that means we just gave up an explosive on defense, right? So we got an issue there. We got to clean up. Vice versa. Hey, we call a blitz. Boom, sack. Whether whether a guy com, comes completely free or whether he just beats a guy, and we got an issue on offense, right? Same thing on special teams. Uh, you know, gigantic. Momentum swings either way, positive or negative, can happen in the kicking game. So you're constantly trying to expose the weaknesses and flaws, the things that will show up, can show up on game day and get you beat. And you're trying to focus in on eliminate those. Right? And that, that continues on through the whole season. How critical is the first scrimmage to making those decisions, or at least leading towards decisions? Who red shirts? Who's going to be a scout? Who's on the borderline? Uh, in terms of the red shirt decision, I don't think that's is because you can play in four games, right? right? And so. You have to have guys available to play all year long. Um, you know who kind of starts out more in a in a scout role, all right? Which is an incredibly important role on a football team. It's hard to prepare for a game on Saturday if you don't have a good good look team for you all week, with you know competitive guys working every day. It'll it'll play into it, obviously, right? But there's another scrimmage next week that guys are going to get more reps, and and obviously injuries play a factor. So. Uh, I think it'd be foolish to say that we come out of this and we know, all right, here's week one travel squad. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're far from that. Thank you. you to go play a game tonight. Eager tonight uh, to see the progress that we've made uh, from not only just spring ball, summer OTAs, the first seven practices of fall camp, and, and now it's live tackling, right, where some of those plays that you think might have been made, you know, whenever you blow the whistle quick, now we get to see our guys try to break through, run through those tackles, and really finish. Um, so tonight, our, our emphasis will really be finishing plays and how aggressively and violently are our skill guys, ball carriers, able to finish our plays. I watched uh, Coastal Carolina and the A&M game in its entirety, and there's been this, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, misinformation campaign about your offense, about all these snaps under center, but you really don't do it that often. So how would you kind of address that? I mean, people are like, well, Will Rogers going to have a bad year because he has to go under center. What is your response? Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll definitely, we'll use, uh, you know, under center whenever uh, it plays to our advantage, you know, sometimes in uh, low red or in, in third and short situations. But I tell you, 95% of the offense is, is in the gun. And... Um, you know, uh, every year it's a little bit different. You get a little bit more advantage in the run game sometimes mm -hmm. in some of those schemes when you're underneath. Um, and sometimes it helps you with play action shots. But, um, you know, I, yeah, I think that would be a total misconception uh, being that we're going to play under center the whole time because I would tell you 95% of it um, is in the gun. Now, you know, on the flip side of that, where I think a lot of the carryover is, is using the pistol instead of just offset. Right, because pistol formation now allows us to kind of balance up a little bit and really try to keep the defense from knowing, you know, hey, the running back's on the left, the tight end's on the right, we're running over here right to the right every time. So um, a little bit of that is always making sure that you're giving defense coordinators different looks 
But, uh, you know, we're primarily a, a shotgun offense. Speaking of different looks, watching the tight ends, they'll be true blocking tight end. They'll be in the slot. They'll be a split. They'll be H-back. They'll be motions. Uh, it's a great versatility to have. How much does it help having two guys like Goody and Spivey who've done this before, but also bringing other guys along? Because that's a lot to ask. Yeah, th those guys are, are really, really experienced, man, and very, very smart individuals. Uh, so it's been uh, really good for them, you know, uh, being able to help some of those younger guys that are adjusting to the position some. And, uh, you know, it is. That's the fun part about tight ends, right, is those guys have a different skill set, uh, you know, of half offensive lineman, half big receiver. And creativity-wise, you can do a whole bunch of different things with those guys uh, when, you know, you're asking them to block or you're asking them to run an RPO or spread out and be a flexed receiver. Uh, so to me, that only adds to the, the creativity um, and the fun part about offenses is when you throw a bunch of different personnel groups in there, you know, uh, defensively, they got to sub for those tight ends, right? They got to match your personnel. And then you figure out, is your guy a better athlete? We'll put him out there and let's throw the ball to him and make a big guy cover it, you know? The thing, too, though, is with guys like that, you don't even have to sub in and out. You can leave them on the field and defense can't adapt it. No though. doubt, no doubt. And, you know, I think, again, just in general in that room, uh, we're making great progress, um, you know, with the tight ends. And, and again, growing, growing the offense in that, but also not being stubborn to, uh, you know, there's been years where I've, I played a whole lot of 12 personnel, and there's years where I've only played an 11 or used more 10. It's all about adapting to the strengths of your players uh, that you have each week. Because <laughs> the reality of college football is we each week is a little bit different, you know? And what you might have in week three might be completely different in week 11 or 12, especially in this league. Speaking of personnel groups, you notice too, you, you run a lot of the same formation, I mean, excuse me, the same plays with 11 or 12 personnel. And there were a couple of situations that I saw where all of a sudden you catch them in a switch and they're adjusting to 12 personnel, but you're running the same play you'd run out of 10 personnel. I mean, how much of that chess match really kind of goes on in the mind of Kevin Barbeck? Yeah, I really, my mindset is uh, simple but creative, right? I try to tell myself, don't overthink this. Keep it simple for the kids where conceptually we're running a lot of the same things, right? But presentation wise, we're in a different personnel group with a shift or a motion. So for the quarterbacks, their progression stays the same. The kids know their landmarks on the concepts of where they need to be. Uh, but from the outside view and a defense coordinator view, right, there's a whole lot of stuff going on and a whole lot of adjustments. And that's where I think you get those personnel matchups as well. You know, when you know, hey, I can get in 12 personnel and I can match up this receiver on this DB, right, that's what I'm looking for in, in each game plan. Uh, but my general philosophy, uh, without being a, a, a real smart guy, is simple yet creative. You know, do you feel like it's benefited you, you know, going up against Matt Brock's you know, defense uh, here in Paul Camp? Yeah, our defense, man, they give you like every look that you possibly can see. Uh, so it's been a real challenge, to be honest with you, because it's not a conventional, we're put, installing our offense, right, in a simplistic, hey, here's a nice 4-2 uh, front with cover four. You know, you start kind of uh, advanced in having to handle all the movement and all the different stuff. So I think Coach Brock and the defense, those guys do a phenomenal job. And um, I'm glad I'm on their team is, is all I can say. You got three years started coming back at quarterback. How are some, you know, Mike Wright, Chris Parson, how are those guys coming along as well? Yeah, uh, they're coming along really well. I thought Mike Wright uh, so far in camp uh, has done a nice job of um, – you know, having more accuracy and, and taking easy completions. Obviously, his skill set um, is a lot different because, you know, he is a real threat uh, to score touchdowns with his legs. Um, you know, but he's coming along. You know, uh, Chris Parsons, in the springtime, you guys only got to see him uh, in Skelly and 7-on-7. Seven seven. And now, you know, it's team reps and the bullets are flying. So, you know, he's coming along well. He's a very talented kid that's got a really strong arm. Uh, and he's... Uh, he really he tries to learn and he really invests a lot of time in learning from Will and Mike um, and how they're doing things. You know, now he's got to get enough experience and, and reps in team where the game slows down a little bit for him, you know. Um, and that's not uncommon for young quarterbacks, uh, especially when they come into the SEC and the bullets are starting to fly. Right, he's got to let that game kind of slow down for him a little bit. Uh, but I'm pleased with the progress that he's making. 
And, uh, you know, really for all those guys, we talk a lot about understanding situational football and, you know, what's important in the red area, what's important on third downs, you know, how am I playing out this two minute in the game or in the half situation. So, uh, you know, we've spent a lot of time just breaking down all those specific details. And it's important to me that you do that during the summertime, during fall camp, uh, so that you've covered it before those uh, intense moments come on Saturday night in the SEC. Last season in App State, you had four rushers with 70 or more carries. You split up the carries really well. Your last year at Central Michigan, you had one guy, 1,800 yards rushing, well over 300 carries. This seems like a deep running back room, but do you have a guy that you would trust to, to give 25, 30 carries a game to in there? You know, um, I think Woody uh, is a phenomenal back. Uh, and to be honest with you, uh, I'm, I'm probably not at that point yet to go, hey, this is how many carries this guy or this guy or this guy or this guy needs to have. Um, but again, it's going back to playing to the strengths of, of what you got. You know, App State, we had a really deep running back room. And so I need to feed those guys, right? And that's complimentary football because some of those guys are hard, powerful downhill runners, right? And we added a guy like Kevon Lee and, and Pittman here. Uh, some of those guys are more outside runners that can stick their foot and get vertical and create explosives like Woody and Simeon and Seth Davis. And so I think all of them together complement each other. Uh, you know, you, you alluded to Central Michigan. Uh, you know, obviously we had the leading rusher in America at Central Michigan. Um, and he was one of those guys that needed enough to get himself going, you know. After you gave it to him about 10 times or so, then he was really ready to rumble. And so everybody is a little bit different. Um, you know, if I have a, a deep room like that, don't be surprised if I roll out in a Wildcat set and just snap it directly to that running back in order to simplify his packaging and give, you know, a guy that can create explosives for us, uh, no matter what position, is all I'm really looking for. Kind of along those lines, with Woody in particular, just how good of a fit has he been going from the air raid into your style of play? Yeah, Woody's been uh, phenomenal. Um, you know, I think he does a great job of, of stretching it uh, on, on outside zone stuff. And, and banging it back up inside. I think he can hit the edge really well. He's got nice patience and exceptional burst, right, which I think is so important at the running back position, right, as they're reading, 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 and they're patient, right, then when they burst, right, that's what you're looking for. I think Woody, uh, from the moment that I got here, and I saw Woody working out at 5 a.m. or whatever when we did our winter workouts, it was uh, evident that he was that guy. He was that worker, and he only knows one speed. Um, and, you know, he's not a, a, a big talker or a loud, flashy guy or anything. Uh, but, man, the, the kid is a worker. And I am so excited to have him and, and uh, see what he does this fall.